We're back again here at Brigitte's Farm, San Diego Seed Company. Two years later, three years later. Time flies, man. It's three it's years. Crazy. It's three years. And so those of you who have been longtime Epic Gardening followers, you probably recognize Brigitte. You probably heard of her on the podcast or seen her on Instagram or just on YouTube. Two years, three years ago, we did a full tour of her organic urban seed farm here in San Diego, California. Is it still true that you're the only certified organic urban seed company? Yes. It's, okay. It's kind of like holding a weird Guinness World Record. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Someone will come along. Yeah. But for the time being, yeah. yes, we are the only one. In Zone 10B, with <laughs> yes. the, under a flight path. Yeah. Who has a cool Indiana Jones path. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, a exactly. Lot of Anyway, so this was three years ago, and, and I would say you're maybe a year into it at that point in yep, time. Yep. And now, of course, she's four years into it. San Diego Seed Company is, I would say, a player in the space for sure. Uh, yeah, we've and, grown up a lot. Yeah. And so what we want to do today is we want to take you, I'm going to hop behind the camera, and Jed is going to show you kind of what's going on at the farm. It's This is how your seeds are grown. When you open a seed packet, whether it be from San Diego Seed or, or anyone else, it has to get grown and processed and produced and all that. And so that's what we're going to show you a little bit about today. Cool. Let's do it. All right. Okay. I do this cheesy thing where I say cultivate the like button. So I'm going to, so I'm going to. Okay. So without further ado, cultivate that like button and the first person to name Brigitte's cat, which you can find the information about because she has her own YouTube channel. We will send a five pack of San Diego seeds and let's get into the tour. Let's go. All righty. So we're here. This is sort of the main stage. Yep. This right. is. The beginning of the garden uh, or the farm so we are a certified organic urban farm so we are certified through ccof um, we follow very strict standards and we produce seed here we trial seed here and we breed seed here all for the seed company so yeah explain that what why what is the real difference between a seed farm and a classic like market garden urban farm? Totally. People ask me that all the time. The first question they ask is, can we buy your produce? No, yeah. <laughs> because we don't sell any produce. Everything we have here is either for seed production. So we let it go to seed or we're trialing it to decide if it's good enough to put in our catalog mm -hmm. or we're doing a breeding project and any produce that's left over. Um, luckily, I get to eat, or we, you know, we give it to friends and family, but we don't actually sell any produce. Got it. And that's why, you know, when, as we walk around, let's take a look under here, actually, right yeah. now. That's why you'll see an overripe eggplant, uh, you know, oh, totally. a, an orange cucumber, a yellow eggplant, these sorts of weirdo things. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we, we're trialing a lot of varieties right now of broccoli, cauliflower, and different brassicas because we're really hot. We were 96 degrees today. Yep. Um, so we need varieties that do really well. So that's the research that we're doing here on our farm okay. is to figure out what grows really well. Like this lettuce here. Yeah. Oh my God. Favorite lettuce. That is our Great Lakes lettuce. And I have this in my garden right now. It is killer. It doesn't, you can transplant it so easily. It really just doesn't flinch at whatever, you know, the weather throws at it. A uh, little bit of moisture and it's fine. So for those who are unfamiliar with the struggles of lettuce, you really can't grow that traditionally in summer. Yep. It's just going to die on you. It's going to wilt on you. And you're saying that the Great Lakes, you can. Yeah. So um, a little tip I'll give you is that crisp heads and icebergs do really well in warmer weather. Obviously, there's a, to a point, sure. but they do better in well in uh, warm weather because they, uh, you know, they fold up on each other, their leaves. So they kind of make themselves into a little cool ice box and they will will uh, they won't will as easily as like open head varieties where, you know, it gets hot and they just go. Yeah. So a little tip for you if you're so in a you're warm to, area. You're trying, let's say, to, if you're breeding for zone 9 and 10, you're saying, I want more of those crisp head styles. Yes, I want something that can grow really well in, you know, it's November and it was yeah. 96 today. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so okay. yeah, let's, let's keep yeah, let's take a look. peeking. We got a huge eggplant stand over here. Oh yeah, we always have tons of eggplant. So here's our famous eggplant patch. You've been to this. <laughs> you, Many times. I feel like it's in three years, it's only gotten bigger. It's never been removed. It's pretty funny. They, they definitely perennialize, but this is a great image for viewers to see. Okay. This is eggplant for seed. You would not want to eat that. That would be absolutely terrible. Yeah. It would yeah. be really fibrous and, and, and just here we bare. have a closer, let's do the fingernail test on yes. this one. For those who don't know, you want that fingernail test and you want it to rebound out if it's nice and ready to go. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is a really, it's soft. That's it's perfect. It's not going to be fibrous. That's going to make for a tasty meal. This is seed production. So, yeah. The difference between a market grower and us is a market grower would never want their produce to get to that point. Yeah. That's a waste. That's a throwaway. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And so you're you're out here trying to grow that for seed and yep. testing it out and all of this. This is our black beauty eggplant that we've been um, we've been growing and producing here on the farm for over three years, yeah. and uh, it's regionally adapted. So we're selecting for varieties that are 
selecting for characteristics that do really well here. And um, so this eggplant is really does much better here in, in zones 9 and 10 or the American Southwest than, say, up in, you know, the Northeast. Got it. Okay. So. And how many, just out of curiosity, that this big boy right here, how many seeds am I getting out of this? How many packs? Let's say? Um, it kind of depends on the seed count, but I think you could easily get, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 packs out of there by the t after you clean it and yeah. do your quality control and which, things Which like at that. some point we're going to look at. Oh, look yeah. at this. <laughs> Look who showed up. Yeah, he always shows up. He basically wants to be famous. I mean, yeah. he is. He is famous. He's totally famous. And you guys have to know his name yep. to get that pack of seeds. Hey, boy. Here, just in case they need a face. Look at that face. face. Mm, <laughs> oh, he's, my little, he's my little go-forgetter. All right, okay, so let's go ahead and turn around because something I'm very jealous of. I just got a shed at the new homestead. I don't have a greenhouse yet. You have a greenhouse. Yeah. Uh, let's go in and let's take a look at what's going on. Yep, so this is my little baby, this greenhouse in here, which is, you know, always a little bit of a mess. But so we actually just moved back into our greenhouse. We had, we usually abandon it during the summer because it's so hot. We can't possibly keep it cool, but now that we're into fall, we've got some fans up and we are fully planted. We've got tons of pollinator flowers. That's what we're focusing on this winter, planting on the farm. Mm -hmm. And then we have leftovers of a lot of our um, fall crops, uh, beets so and sweet peas. So are these your trials for, let's say, the next season's worth of seeds? Uh, it'll be our trials. And then there's also stuff that we are doing seed production of. Like this is our Point Loma Pops, okay. which is a variety of sweet pea of the flowering sweet pea that um, came from uh, Point Loma, obviously. Sure. Yeah. And we've been producing seed from those for a couple of years now. And so we produce seed every year. Every year we sell out of the seed. Every year we keep producing it. Got it. So, so then talk to me a little bit about just out of curiosity, what's your seed starting setup, your preferred sort of method? Yeah, so we, I really like the bottom watering. Me too. I really huge like yeah, the I'm bottom watering. Um, I'm not a fan. I like these trays. This is 50 cell trays, which is just about perfect. In fact, they could be a little bit bigger and I would be okay with that. Uh -huh. um, I am still struggling to find really good quality trays that, that aren't so flimsy. Flimsy, because, you know, it's we use the trays for years. We try to, to prevent waste. Um, but you can see these are only two years old. It's they? really easy with when the soil's in there too to just pick it up and crack it out, you oh, know? Yes. I've found, I don't know if you know about these guys, but Bootstrap Farmer, mm -hmm. they've got the double, sort of double thickness that okay, you might want to try out. Strong. Yeah. I don't... It's expensive. I mean, it's probably three times more costly, but yeah. you use it for like 10 years. Yeah, easy. that's yeah. what I want. All right, Bootstrap Farmer, I'm going to look them up. Um, so yeah, we do, we do bottom watering and that's partly because the greenhouse gets so hot. We want to keep fungal growth down as much as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. Um, and here's the biggest tip that I can give people here. Let me grab my little guy. Uh, the biggest tip I can give people who are seed starting is to screen your soil when you put it on top. hundred percent. Yeah. So we actually do not recommend, and it drives me nuts when I do seed starting classes and I see people stick their finger you know, make the hole and drop the seed in. Okay, I do that just so you know. Oh gosh. I do that. But but I also do a coating on top. I also do okay, that. So, so I do both. I really recommend planting the seed on top and then covering it with the correct amount of soil that you want. Now, of course, it, you you might have to do the, a little bit more if it's something big. Beans, you could you stick Make your finger in. But we do a lot of small herb and flower seeds here, and you want really fine seeds. In fact, like right here, we have um, our, let's see, where's our yarrow? Right here. Yeah, the yarrow's yeah. already popping up. Look how tiny that is. And you that can would, almost not see that at all. It would only pop up if we really did a good job screening the soil. So we actually screen it with this guy. Okay, so you should just you should use a standard yeah. sieve or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean I make pasta in this too. It's yeah. fine, <laughs> um, but that's a big tip that I and love. So, to help so you're about. saying that because you don't want the thin, tiny little seeds. You think it's a little bit too much to kind of bury them deep. Absolutely, yeah. okay. absolutely. And even if it's a bigger seed, by sifting it like this and using a really light um, layer yeah, nice of soil, mix, yeah. they actually pop up quicker. So mm -hmm. we found on average that our seeds will pop up almost 50% quicker. Oh, so wow. we're talking half the time because they're not having to bust past particles of soil like that. Yeah. And then as far as the mix, aside from that sort of sieving method, do you have a specific mix? Do you go back? Do you make your own? Um, we don't make our own because I've got enough stuff going yeah, on yeah. to make our own. I really like the propagation mix from SunGrow and then we really like the um, Kellogg blue ribbon okay it's, so you got the sun grow here yep propagation mix and then you got the kellogg gnb 
right there? The blue ribbon. Okay. It's, it's got larger particles in it, um, so it's another good reason why you want to sift the top layer. Um, but it's, it's good quality stuff, and because we're in a greenhouse where the moisture is really staying in, those bigger parts of perlite help to keep more air in the soil. Got it. So whereas the sun grow, you really got to be careful on your watering because you can end up getting quite a bit of um, algae growth yeah. action. Yeah, because it's yeah. just holding on to so much moisture. Yeah, gotcha. Awesome. All right, cool. Let's check out the rest of the farm. Okay, so we're here. I see we're standing on dirt, which is kind of how I saw most of the farm maybe three years ago. Yep. And clearly that's changed because I'm looking at a massive mound of yeah. Why don't you tell them? So uh, when we moved into the farm, really terrible soil. It looked just like this. This is this what we're standing on. This is what my house looks like right yeah. now. It's, it's, it's atrocious. It's decomposed granite, OK? Yeah. It makes for great walkways. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. Um, so we brought in truckloads and truckloads of compost and mulch, both to keep our weeds down, to keep moisture in the soil, and to help regulate the temperature of the soil. Because we get so hot here in Southern California that if you don't have layers of, of organic matter on top of your soil, keeping in the moisture, your soil can get really hot. It kills all the microbes, kills all the worms. So um, I, I can actually show you what we've done yeah, on the yeah, farm. Let's yeah, let's take a look. So we had this path and we recently just widened it because it was getting too big. And so you can see in here, I'm gonna Holy take my moly, hands in yeah. here. Look at the difference between that. Oh, look at the grabby grab. Look at that. Oh yeah, throw that boy away. Give I'll, him to the chickens. I'll give him to the chickens, yeah. yeah. But this was this. Okay, so, and so we're talking a three-year transformation. Three-year transformation, and this became this only with compost and free mulch uh, that we got from Arborist. We got from Chip Drop. So you're talking the mulch is 100% wood chips, mm -hmm. and the compost is 100% just either compost, your own yep. or just whatever. We get a lot of compost from the Miramar Greenery yep. in San Diego. It's wonderful stuff. I brought a load to your house. You I've, know what I've it been is. Using it, yep. Yep, and. Um, it's so what people have to remember is so not only do, do the wood chips eventually turn into compost they break down but the bigger thing that they're doing that's so important in southern california is they're keeping moisture in and they're keeping microbes alive mm -hmm. if you can keep microbes alive and you can keep worms alive in your soil well then guess what they can do a bunch of work for you too yeah i mean look at this this that's is insane. so gorgeous i'm super jealous the color that. difference just that right there should show you and you can see also the difference over time so like mm -hmm. here we have this great layer that over three years it broke down and then as you go down it just gets more sandy yeah you know but over time all of this leaches down into it and you know when a plant gets big enough that their roots get down to this point they should be able to you know live in that but when they're tiny transplants and you're planting them into the ground they need good soil like that all right so here was kind of the process when we moved into this property first we brought in as much organic matter as we could, truckloads and truckloads of compost and mulch. We built the soil. And then over time, with what little extra funds we had, we started building some of our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, really love this system. We've tried out a bunch. This is uh, the trellis to make you jealous. Is that what it's called? I believe that's the video. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a Josh satin creation. And um, what I love is that it's just it was really inexpensive comparatively to yeah. other projects. And we use this so that we can do the low and lean method for our tomatoes and our cucumbers. So for those of you who don't know, the lower and lean is basically just using a trellis like this, something that you can hang from. And then Brigitte has these they're basically called, just winders, I guess. Yep, they're called tomahooks. We actually sell them um, on our website. And basically what they do is they allow you to unwind. Mm -hmm. um, so you would hang them from here. We, we just hung them with a, um, with a quick strap. Yep. And it allows us to unwind the tomatoes as they grow and we just lean them on the ground. What's great about this process, I know it's an investment to get, you know, to build all this stuff, but if you have a really small space, especially if you like to grow indeterminate viney tomatoes, yep. be big beefsteaks, we had the most epic production of uh, Mariana's Peace, which is a very large um, heirloom beefsteak tomato using this method. Yeah. And they looked incredible. It was clean. We had less disease issues. It, it was really great. Awesome. Cool. Well, why don't we take a look at some of the new expansions in the back before we then actually tie it all into how does the seed get produced? Cool. Sounds okay. good to me. Let's do it. Hi, love, love. Look, our little helper is back in the scene. Always. Alrighty. So what are we looking at back here? Yeah. So we've expanded since you were last here, our pumpkin patch. Uh, it's towards the end, but can you zoom in on that huge oh, pumpkin? Oh, look at that guy. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Let's take a look. Look at that guy. Yeah. Okay. Super excited about him. 
we have you can tell back here so the further you get back the the, the soil is not as good but we've been adding tons and tons of mulch very spongy very spongy so it's helping us with the bermuda grass and it's also keeping moisture in and it's allowing this area to eventually be plantable um, we've got all our, our chickens in there tons of them don't hold on let me take a look at these guys real quick hey hi ladies how many do you have in here i i'd rather not say okay <laughs> <laughs> Don't learn how to hatch your own chickens during <laughs> during a global health pandemic. <laughs> you might end up with too many. <laughs> so we have one, two, three different compost systems now, just because uh, one was not enough. So sure. we've we've had to move them. This is our Kajari patch. So uh, we actually did a Kajari seed production here in this patch. It's a, the patch is about done, but let's see if we can spot a Kajari. Here. That's a melon, yeah? Yeah. The Kajari melon. Oh, look at those little guys. Oh, yeah. Look, 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 look. Wow. Oh, man. Smell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, so that's sweet. I'll have to you, cut just that on the open. rind, that's sweet. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, so that'll be a treat for later. <laughs> and then underneath here, we can go, let me go all the way around. What is this, amaranth here? Yep, so this is amaranth. This is also seed production. Okay. And then under here we have a new variety of cabbage that we are trialing. I'm very excited about Is this. Is this the all-seasons cabbage? No, the all-season cabbage, we trialed that last year and it was so good it made it into our catalog. Okay. This is a savory cabbage that I'm really excited about. Big fan of savory cabbages. They, I think their flavor is unparalleled. I like to make a lot of cabbage soup and things. Uh -huh. um, it's just a beautiful, and it's a beautiful plant. So um, we're going to see how well these do. And then depending on how well they do, they may or may not make it into our catalog. Got it. Okay, cool. Looks like this unnamed mystery cat that is only going to be named by the winner of the giveaway wants to go check out the seeds. So why don't we go ahead and do that? All right. So you want to see some of my machines? Got lots of machines running around Let's here. Let's do it. Um, or toys. They're my toys, actually. This is a clipper. This is how we clean a lot of our dry seeded crops. Mm -hmm. Here's an example of a dry seeded crop. Can Who can my name this? My absolute favorite crop of all time besides dragon fruit. Comment Wait. down below if you know what it is. Hold on. Let's do a little. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. But I mean, look at it. It's not clean. Yeah. Right. There's a bunch of sort of yep, fibers got, and, and and there's such. also uh, lighter seeds like you wouldn't want that in a seed pack. That's not a developed seed. We got to get rid of that. Let's get rid of it. So the way that I do it is with this machine right here. OK. You also look at that. Look at that. What's really cool is so that's called winnowing and that's actually just an ancient technique where you use wind yeah. to blow off the um, excess parts, the chaff and it's so light that you actually wow. can just do it with your brass. That looks amazing. Funny story, when we first started the seed company, that's how we processed all our seeds. I, I didn't remember. have this machine. I remember, so yeah. It was a lot of me standing in front of a box fan. Uh, lifting and dropping. Yeah, lifting and dropping and making a mess everywhere. Yeah. So. so if someone wants to see the clipper in action, we did it on our other tour video yep. three years ago. So you can see that. But there is a new machine over here that yeah. I kind of want to take a look at. Let's check out this baby. All right, so this is called a Ballard. And it is probably the sexiest machine <laughs> alive. No, I'm not joking. It is. I mean, look <laughs> at the curves and the color and the craftsmanship. You, they just don't make machines like this anymore. Oh, she's been spending too much time with the seeds, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so this machine was patented in 1889. So it's a really old machine. But what it does is it packages the seeds for me. So it actually takes the seeds, puts it in the package. We have videos of it running on our Instagram and on uh, across social media. I'll add a little bit of that. Yeah, that, but that's what this beautiful machine does. And there's actually only about 30 of them running in the United States. Really? Yep. Is that because it's just a vintage machine or like maybe the, the other seed packing machines are too expensive? I think it, well, it's a combination of um, there are just only being so many seed companies. It's a very specialized piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. Also, this is a very old machine. They obviously quit making them a very long time ago. Yeah. Um, I think uh, they said that there's probably only 100 machines left and maybe wow. 30 of them are running. At one point, we had two machines that didn't really work very well and we traded those in for this beautifully redone piece of artwork. Um, 
And I think then the other part too is yes, the other machines are really big. We we couldn't afford, nor would we have the space, and it, it's just not. Doesn't make sense. We're not that big yet. Yeah. So this is how we do. And this machine actually only packages probably about 25% of our seed packs. The rest of it are packaged by hand. Wow. So that means there is somebody who is taking the time and the love and the energy of putting seeds in that pack. So when you buy that pack of seeds, that's what that money is going towards is paying for us to produce it and then for also for somebody to put the seed in the pack. So yeah. thank you for that. Yeah. Speaking of, do you think we can take a look at some of the seeds that you guys have? Yeah. So our offices have expanded. So let's, let's take a look inside. All right, here we are in the seed vault. Yes, so this is all the seeds come in, they go, we, we process them, they do, we do all of our quality control, and then eventually they make it in here where they get put into the pack, and then that pack goes to you. So Look at that this. Is, what do we have here? Narrow leaf milkweed. That's a narrow leaf milkweed. That is the native milkweed to the American Southwest. Mm -hmm. So that is the native uh, variety. And then we also have a very important helper. Um, Oh. This is this is uh, why well, I won't name her extra credit points if you get her name, but she protects the office. She's actually really important because we have a lot of seeds, which could mean that we could yeah. have a lot of rodents. She keeps everything. It's a good point. Under control. I didn't think about that. She's yeah. a seed guardian. Yeah, she's actually a very high paid employee. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is where it happens. If you order seeds from us, it is myself and my husband at this table here filling the orders early in the morning so we can get them in the mail by 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. and then they're out the door and then they're to your your garden. And how has it been for you this year, this past year? I mean, it's 2020, right? So we all know kind of what's been going on. What happened in your world? I know for me, obviously a lot of people are into gardening. Yeah, so we really blew up um, come like April and I'm actually extremely proud of us and our team that we were one of the few seed companies that we never stopped shipping. We never put, uh, we never blacked out our website. Mm -hmm. We worked around the clock uh, to send out orders and we're really proud that we were able to do that, partly because we're small yeah. um, and you know, mom and pop owned, so that really helped. <laughs> The, the restrictions didn't affect us as much, but we were just basically on lockdown working around the clock <laughs> to get out orders. And there was a lot of very successful gardens this year because of that. I know that for a fact. I've seen many of them. Yes. Awesome. Well, cool. Hey, I love it. This update is amazing. Cool. If people want to find out where they can either buy your seeds, which I highly recommend because it's not, it's San Diego Seed Company, but the seeds don't have to be grown necessarily in Southern California. Totally. A lot of our varieties will do well across the United States. Yeah. But if you're in an area that's really hot, that's really dry, if you're in the American Southwest, we're your go-to company because that's what we really focus on. Mm -hmm. We also focus on container gardening and growing in small spaces because, well, here in Southern California, we don't have much You know space. that's what I'm about, yeah. Yeah, so, um, but yeah, you can check us out. We're all over Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and our website is sandiegoseedcompany.com. All right, thank you so much, Brzezette. Congrats, three years of amazing success. It's really cool to see this. I think what I'm gonna do now Good luck in the garden, guys. Keep growing and your boys taking some kale home. All right. <laughs>